After a gangbusters CES 2023, where my arcade showed off a plethora of new handheld and tabletop toys, we sat for months in silence, waiting and waiting. Well, the floodgates have opened and new product has started to ship. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at something from the Atari line. We know they have a lot of Atari stuff coming. They partnered with Atari for their 50th anniversary last year. And here we have the MicroPlayer Pro Atari VCS. And we're gonna take a look at it right after this. This video brought to you in part by Tommy in the order of Cosmic Champions. This exciting and heartwarming coming of age Gen X novel is available now. Check the link for more info. Hey there, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I am John and I am a Gen X Grown Up. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and checking it out. And as I said, I have here the new MicroPlayer Pro Atari 50th Anniversary branded. You can see it's all Pong looking in there, which is pretty cool. Now, when I saw this first announced, I was already thinking, why is it an arcade machine if it's Atari 2600 games? Well, it's more than just that. It shows it has 100 games on it, but it's not just 100 VCS games, there's more stuff on there. So what I am super curious to find out is what is it like playing 2600 games on a little tabletop cabinet like this? It has a new stick, it has some new buttons, it has some new tricks up its sleeve, and I can't wait to see what they all are. Let's head to the table and check it out. And let's start with a quick tour of the box. Now, I know you can see the gadget inside. We're gonna to get to that momentarily. And I don't do a tour of the box to burn time. It's really because we can learn things. We can get hints about what's inside by what information it says and doesn't say on the outside of the box. So why don't we get started by looking, uh, how about right up here first? A handful of titles have been highlighted here on the box, including Missile Command, Asteroid, Centipede, Warlords, Pong, and Breakout. And I find this interesting because they're highlighting especially Warlords, Pong, and Breakout. So those are all paddle games. We know this is 2600 emulation. Uh, <laughs> Missile Command and Centipede were both trackball games, but not on the VCS, so fair enough. And Pong was not even a 2600 game, unless, of course, you're talking about Video Olympics, which is on here, but that's fine, I guess. But it always strikes me as odd why they pick the games that might not necessarily be the best representation of 2600 games. Anyway, I guess they're just using the most recognized Atari-branded uh, okay. The next thing that jumps out at me is this 100 video games fully playable. Yes, but if you look on the reverse side, play 75 plus legendary Atari 2600 games. 75, 100, that suggests to me this is another one of those, let's put shovelware on there to round out the games list. I haven't seen this yet, but I'm guessing that's what's going on because I mean, there are 100 games you could put on this, maybe not 100 you have licenses to, so nice round number, I guess. That being said, while we're here, look, some of the best titles you would expect. I can see, oh, there is Video Olympics, so there's our Pong, of course. Uh, I see Adventure on there, I would guess. Uh, oh, there's Tempest, the prototype, I see Missile Command, the ones we would expect. And opening up this little magnetic fold gives us all kinds of more information. Ah, Atari, futuristic since forever. So being the 50th anniversary representation that this is, uh, it kind of has some highlights of what's in the box. We saw this layout first in those Data East and Jellico Sports games where you open the box and you had this uh, yeah, pretty big backpack to put this one in. But yeah, you can play the game and USB-C and the batteries and all that is there. Okay, I think we have learned everything we can from the outside looking in. Let's get inside of this new micro player and check it out. And par for the course, we have the MicroPlayer Pro itself, and then we have some documentation. We have instructions, those are gone. And then we have what actually is an old manual. Look, it's got the old pocket player stuff. But the last thing I opened from this new line looks like a giant checklist. So my arcade, if you want a checklist, I'm gonna checklist it. Let's go ahead and mark off the MicroPlayer Pro Atari 50th anniversary. Before we power it on, then, let's go ahead and take a quick tour of the exterior. Of course, we have the artwork on both sides. There's the Pong-inspired Atari 50th anniversary decoration down the side. Around front, we start up here with the Atari 50 marquee. Now, this I don't think is illuminated. I could be proven wrong in a second here. Video computer system label here. Then we have the 2.75 inch screen. It looks to maybe be the same screen. It's definitely the same size screen as on the new Pocket Players and a little My Arcade labeling down below the screen. Moving down then to the control deck, we gotta spend some time here. First, super inspired by the 2600. We have the grill that would be on the top of the console. Around the controller, we have the dashed orange lines that you would see on a CX-40. This is an upgraded joystick from what we used to have. Gone is the bat top that screws into a D-pad. Now we have what appears to be a steel or aluminum shaft bat top joystick that is permanent. 
Over on the side, we have a B and an A button. I, I'm guessing that's for the extra games because VCS games only need one button. Uh, we, we will see. Uh, but they, they match the Pong theming and color. They're concave and they feel pretty good. I actually like being able to reach around this to control the game. It feels pretty natural and I think that's is gonna work pretty well, we'll see. And then up top we have a home, which I assume is escape the game. Select and start would be our game select and game start from uh, the 2600 console. And down here, rather than what looks like on the artwork was the, uh, the backlight button, instead we have a TV type, color black and white, and a difficulty switch. Now I assume that difficulty is for player one because there's no player two here. However, we have to keep in mind, there are a few games out there that use difficulty switch too. Now, if they're not included on this unit, it doesn't really matter. So it's probably not gonna be a problem. I expect my arcade thought that out and they know what games they have here. But having access to the switches right on the front of the knee board, I love that. That is a good call. And spinning around on the back, we can see where that screen brightness toggle button has moved to. We have a USB-C power in, hooray, no micro, and we have a headphone jack. And then sliding up here past the battery door, which again has a latch plus a safety screw. And we have a power on off switch, volume up, volume down buttons, and a single rear firing speaker right there on the back. And it would be easy to gloss over this, but I love what they've started doing with the bottoms of these units. Look at this nice big rubbery strip across the bottom to keep it from slipping on the table. Check this out. Look at that. Look at that. No slip. So your game is not going to slide around while you're playing it. Nice addition. Let's go ahead and peel off this fake Missile Command sticker. We're gonna put some batteries in the back and then we're gonna power it up and give it a shot. This little gadget comes preloaded with 100 games, but they're absolutely worthless without power. You gotta plug it into USB or put in batteries like we're doing here. The power that keeps Gen X grown up running? Well, that's the generosity of our patrons over at patreon.com slash Gen X grown up. For as little as a dollar a month, you could show your support for the things we do here on YouTube and the weekly podcast and the website and everything that we do. You could support us and make sure we keep doing what we do. And you could provide the power that keeps us running. All right, let's get back to the games. Okay, it's ready to go. Let's power it on. Oh, we're going to the arcade again, and there's our micro player in the arcade. That's a that's a cute addition to this uh, this pro line. Oh, okay, so we get a main menu here. Oh, and by the way, no, the marquee does not light up, so we verified that. So we have the featured games and then the bonus games. Hmm, where to begin? I guess let's look at the featured games. So I'm going to hit A. Okay, so we have a linear list here, and uh, oh, look at the the wallpaper. That's is that for every game? Yeah, there's Adventure, Adventure 2, Air, oh, Air Sea Battle, Aqua Venture is here. So what do we have? Uh, 10 games per page. So it said 75 plus. Let's see how many games are here. So I see 10, 20, 30, 40, oh, 50, 60, 70, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Is that 77? Am I counting right? Yeah, I think 77 games. Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait a second. It didn't occur to me when I was recording this, but now when I'm editing, do you think this was intentional? 77 VCS games, 1977 when the VCS came out. I mean, if it's a coincidence, it's one heck of a coincidence. I think my arcade just dropped a little Easter egg for us and it took me a couple days to catch it, but I caught it. Nice job. <laughs> All right, let's get back to it. Is what we have. Oh, and I'm here on Yar's Revenge. So while we're here, I guess let's try Yar's Revenge. Oh, look, you can see the difficulty is right there. The P1 easy. I'm going to hit the button down on the knee board. Yeah, easy and hard. The left-hand side even has, like, the emulation is aware of a second player, but since there's no second player available here, then, okay. All right, well, let's uh, game select is what you'd expect. Oh, now the sound, I haven't turned that up at all. That's just on default. So let me turn it up a little bit. It was near full. Sounds great from here. Turn it down to all the way off. You can have all the way off if you want. Nice. All right, let's uh let's let's kill a cotile, shall we? Oh, here it comes. Boom! Got him. Now we obviously can't play every single one of these games. We need a sampling to understand. Oh, there's all the Sword Quest games are here, Street Racer. Now Street Racer was a paddle game. Let's see what we've got here. All right, so full control with the joystick. Yeah. So we, 
So I feel like there's any acceleration. So so. All right. So let's hold down the uh, the button to speed up. Yep. All right. Look. They interpolated the joystick as a paddle as best they could, not putting a paddle on this game, so understandable. Let me just uh, poke through here and see what grabs my attention. Of course, Save Mary, great game. Uh, I should call out, let's talk a little bit about, now this background fades, so if you're worried about screen fade and uh, you know viewing angle, it's all there, it's just the, uh, the image itself fades out from, uh, from left and right. And actually to my eyes, the contrast looks even better than uh, than what it looks like in the camera. So if you're concerned about graying, um, not really. Uh, you have to go pretty far for it to start graying out. Like you can see there's the angle and there's the other angle. Okay, so but square on, we seem to be fine. Uh, oh, look, so here, that is what they did. So they took Pong and they said it's Video Olympics, but Pong is in it. And again, I'm gonna guess they did interpolation of the joystick. Yep, that's right. Yeah, that's not ideal to play with the joystick. There's almost no acceleration. So the choices were find a way to add a paddle to this little gadget or eliminate these games entirely or the compromise, which is include them but not add the paddle. So, uh, you know, I've, there are better ways to play these paddle games, certainly, than this high-speed joystick interpolated thing. But all right, let's move along. How about some Missile Command? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know you see a little more flicker probably in the camera than I'm seeing on screen, but I am noticing the flicker is a little more noticeable than I would expect it to be on a CRT. That's certainly true. And you'll notice when you play it that, yeah, just a little more uh, images coming from like the ICBM trails are much more uh, flickery than I'm accustomed to seeing. It also feels like it's playing a little slower. Is that my imagination? I don't know. Oh, Fast Eddie is on here. I just recently did a tier video about the, all of those 20th Century Fox games. This is not even an Atari game. This is Fox. So Fast Eddie's a great game. Are you kidding me? Oh man. It doesn't look like much, but oh, if you've played it, it's pretty cool. So this is a Fox game on here that they got the license for. Not just Atari stuff. I mean, they say Atari classics, but more than that. <laughs> nice. Now, as I flip through here, surely you're seeing some games that you... Uh, uh, that can grab your attention. Demons and Diamonds I saw. Oh, bowling. Who doesn't love Atari bowling? I don't know. People that just don't enjoy happiness. And a little curve. Oh, let's pick up that spare. I just want to see him dance. He's very happy. I see Centipede here. Let's give Centipede a shot. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's the Atari Centipede. Now, this is one that initially was a trackball game. Translated to a joystick game for the Atari, and that's the version we have here, of course. The spider. All right, next. Got to go for a little bit of basketball because why not? Oh, there we go. Scored right away. I'm not sure how I could possibly improve on that. Nope, not like that. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, all right, basketball looks good. Gotta try asteroids just because, right? Oh, <laughs> that's wonderful. Speaker sounds really good. Is it all the way up? I feel like maybe it's almost too loud, but it sounds great. Maybe just echoing inside of this big micro player cabinet makes it resonate, but... Sounds marvelous. Yeah, and it wouldn't be a look at 2600 games without looking at one of my all-time favorites, Adventure. Yeah, we'll just go to game two. So there's the game select, of course. Uh, what I didn't show you is the, uh, the color black and white switch down at the bottom. Works great. Well, it even shows you right in the middle, mono right there when you're black and white. Yeah, okay. 
And uh, yeah, that, the bat has my sword, so let's grab that bat right quick. Ha ha, oh, he ran away. Let's see what's down here. That looks solid. Nobody up in the White Castle. Nobody guarding the magnet. We'll check the other side. We don't need the bridge, but we'll carry it with us. Something else in that room. Yeah, we'll check up here. Oh, there's a green dragon. Oh, he's eager to guard the uh, bridge, isn't he? And nothing down there. All right, well, you can have the bridge. Enjoy it. All right, while we're here, we've got to look at the bonus games down here. So we had 77 VCS games. So we're gonna have some bonus games. So let's hop in here. So I see, it looks like there's 10 per page. There's 10, 20, three, exactly 100. Yep, we have precisely what we need. And what do we have? This is always entertaining. Eight Eyes, Bad Street Brawler, Dash Gallery, Free Fall, Greeds, The Immortal, Little Lancelot, Mermaids of Atlantis, Motor Rally, Pyramids of Ra, Reversi, Snacky. Oh, what's Snacky? That better be a Pac-Man clone. Oh no, it's a looks like a, a Wormy clone. Do -do -do, do -do -do, do -do -do. Normal game, please. Looks pretty NES-y if you ask me. I'm not familiar with... Oh, is it Snakey? Snacky? Maybe it's Snakey. Oh, it's kind of cute. Oh, well, I'd bite my tongue. This is not a terrible looking game. Okay. Well, my arcade just surprised me. It's actually kind of a cute game. I'm used to these being, you know, lawn mowing and dog and whatever silly games, but that's cute. All right. Uh, and then Reversi, of course, and a nice board game. And these aren't garbage. I mean, some of them are. I've seen Stanley before. That's garbage. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. Platformer, as I recall. Let's get past all the dialogue and a map. Yeah, there he is. Look at that. I mean, just, I can already tell you. Yeah, pass. <laughs> so the bonus games are hit or miss. There's actually a couple of cute things in there. Reversi, not a bad addition. It just really feels like they added some from the library of stuff they had to flesh out the 100 to have a nice round number on the box, you know? Before we wind this up and give it a rating, I almost forgot to show you the variable brightness function for the screen. Now, all the footage we've done so far has been at medium brightness. It's easy to forget the functions there because it's hidden around back, but it does toggle. So if I hit it once, it goes brighter. And again, it goes down to the darkest. And you have three levels, medium and bright, dark, medium, and bright. So depending on the lighting conditions or battery conservation or whatever it is you're looking for, you've got that function as well. With that then, I'm pretty sure we have a pretty good sampling and cross-section of what this little micro player brings to the table. So let's summarize and figure out what we think about it. So that's the My Arcade Atari 50th Anniversary Micro Player Pro. So what about the pros and cons of the Pro unit? Let's start with the pros. I love that they put the difficulty switch and the color black and white switch right on the front of the unit rather than burying it in software. Really handy, especially when we know how important those switches are for games that you might not even think they're important for or that you could actually switch mid-game. So I appreciate that. 77 games on this. I was a little worried knowing the propensity of my arcade to put a few games and then a bunch of other stuff for filler, but 77, 2600 games, including we saw not just Atari branded, but also prototypes and things that weren't released homebrew things. Uh, we saw that one that was from 20th Century Fox in there. A lot of variety. What about the cons? Well, not a perfect unit. In general, I want to say that playing games on this, playing 2600 games on this, feels a little odd because it is a arcade machine. I know the company's called My Arcade, but they're doing 2600 games here. The control was fine. The buttons were great. The joystick was great. It just feels a little weird playing it on a unit like this that's an arcade machine. Additionally, I had two observations that I'm not certain of and I'm not gonna hold against, but I wanna raise. One was that I saw a little bit more flicker than I normally would expect to, in Missile Command in particular, and it felt like maybe the game was running a little slower than full speed. Not 100% certain, but just an impression that I had. But despite those little minor quibbles, there's a lot to like about this unit. The new stick feels great. The new buttons feel great. You have that brightness control. You have a lot of games on here. You have the beautiful established form factor that we know looks great on a shelf for playing. It just feels a little odd, as I noted, to have 2,600 games on this. 
Not bad, just weird. Personally, I'm most looking forward to the pocket player version of this because that's where I think it's gonna fit a little better in my mind to play those VCS games. That being said, I really do like this 50th anniversary Micro Player Pro that my arcade has just put out, and I'm gonna rate it three tokens out of five. Looks great, controls great, plays well, it just isn't the best way to play Atari 2600 games, not even the best way to play 2600 games in this new offering from my arcade. So you've got to stick around and stay tuned for what more is coming in the next few days. Now, before we leave, I just have to let you know that this unit was provided for review by my arcade, but they had zero editorial oversight over what I had to say about it. Additionally, if this unit is for you or any of the new units are for you, check the description of this video, links to all of the new units that you could purchase over on Amazon. Amazon. It's a shortcut there for you to save you time. And with more stuff coming, I will throw links over my shoulders here and here to more products that I'll be reviewing from this new line of my arcade gadgets. I certainly hope you found something to enjoy in this video though, and I cannot wait to talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.